This meeting is being recorded. <laughs> all right, all right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, welcome to the uh, MSC IPP Officer Commissioning Brief. Uh, I am Lieutenant J.G. McCauley, and with me today, I have Lieutenant J.G. Shirley. I have Lieutenant J.G. Select McCarthy and Lieutenant J.G. Select Marone. All right, so we brought in, and there may be others that have logged in too. If I don't see you, you're more than welcome to speak at any time. Um, decided to assemble uh, this team of, of, of people who were selected this year for the MSC program so we can give back. All right, this is to pay it forward for those that maybe have never applied or maybe uh, have applied and, you know, maybe didn't get selected this go around, but, you know, maybe you can get something today that uh, that uh, motivate you and inspire you to keep going. Um, so with that being said, we're going to go ahead and dive into the MSC IPP program and uh, we'll, we'll open it up for questions and answers at the end. Okay, so going over some basic information. First things first, uh, become familiar with the My Navy HR page. If you can see the screen uh, on the My Navy HR page, if you go to uh, career management, go to the career counseling tab, and then go to commissioning programs, you will see that on this page, this is all of your officer commissioning programs, every single one of them. Uh, however, tonight, we're only going to talk about the MACIPP, but all of your officer commissioning programs are here. Recommendation, when you start off with the officer commissioning programs, the first thing that you should know is the OPNAV instruction 1420.1 Bravo. Uh, we get a lot of questions about, uh, you know, about the program and applying and things of that nature, but uh, many of the questions or many of the answers that you're looking for is in the actual OPNAV instruction. So if you go over here to the right where it says references and you click on that, All right, the actual instruction will pull up. The page went away. Uh-oh, it went away? Can y'all see it? Uh-oh. Yeah. What I about now? There. It's, it looks only like the top of it right now. Oh, okay. Thank you, thank you. Let me see. Let's see, let me see. I'm gonna stop share, and then I'm gonna screen share again. Let's try this again. What about now? All right, thank you. Okay, so this instruction is very big, very long. It was made back in 2009. And so what I'm gonna do is get, get you to the uh, table of contents and then you can go from there. So OPDAP instruction 1420.1 Bravo, your commissioning instruction. When you get to the table of contents, you see all of your chapters right here. Okay, again, tonight we're only talking about MSC IPP. However, all the rest of your commissioning programs are here. So MSC IPP is chapter six. Okay, so what do you do? You go down to chapter six. Let me move this over and let's see if we can take the fast route down to chapter six. All right. So I can tell we're in chapter six because that's the PA information. Oh, actually, that's nurse. One more. There we go. All right. So chapter six. So this is important because everything here gives you the basic requirements for what's needed to apply for the MSC IPP program. This is the basic requirements. All right. And it breaks it down by each specialty that you are looking for. And when we say basic requirements, U.S. citizenship, the age requirement your moral character, such as NJPs or DUIs, your physical qualifications, your, your medical and physical screenings, um, your security clearances, right? And then again, it breaks down into specific subspecialties. So you got your healthcare administrator, and I'm not gonna go through each of these, but you have your healthcare administrator, you have your uh, PA, you have your EHOs, so forth and so on. So your first place to begin is here, in the OPNAV instruction to get the basic information of what is needed to apply for the program. I can, I can tell you like, and this is real talk, you're, you're gonna be hard pressed to get, 
you know, officers, junior officers, the senior officers to help you if you haven't taken the time to actually read through the instruction itself. Because you got to think to yourself, how can you be an effective leader, naval officer, if you cannot read instructions? So start there and read the instruction, okay? Now, after you have, you know, gone through the instruction itself, remember that I said that this instruction was back in 2009. So there's, there's some information in there that may be outdated because every year, right, BMED is looking for different things to help grow that community or downsize that community. So where do you go to find out that information? Well, back on this commissioning page, right, this, this link down here that says MSC IPP Professional Development, if you click on that, hopefully y'all can still see that. Okay, good. If you click on that, it brings you to the MSC IPP page itself and, and all the information that you need specifically for MSC IPP. There's a lot of information on this page, right? Your references, it breaks down the specialties and what they're looking for. Um, the one thing that I will click on today is the NAV admin. That's the most recent NAV admin. Okay, when you click on that, it'll come up. And here's why the NAV admin is so important because, and I hear it from sailors all the time, uh, sailors will address things that, were, that was in the instruction that came out what, how long ago was that, 11 years ago maybe? Versus what the NAV admin is saying they're looking for this year. So pull the most recent NAV admin, read through it. It'll tell you exactly what applications are being accepted for that year. For example, this year or the last year, all of these specialties were being accepted. That might not be the same next year. So you have to check, as well as it'll tell you a conditional release must be in the application. Because I get questions all the time. Well, do I have to have a conditional release in the application or can, it, can, I, can I add it after? It clearly says it right here. It has to be in the application. Um, there's amplifying guidance for each specialty, right? So healthcare administrator, uh, if you want to do direct, you can go You do it with your master's because that's a very common question. Uh, if you want to go training, then you must include an acceptance letter and you can only do the training at these two programs, Army Baylor and USIS right? Physician assistant, some more amplifying information. And one thing about PA that came out in the Nevada was they're giving out age waivers up to age 48. While if you look at the instruction, you have, you're, you're supposed to commission by age 42, which it says it right there. But PA was given age waivers. So again, you see why it's important to make sure you look at the NAV admin because you may not have applied for PA thinking that you were 43 and you can't apply when it clearly says you can get an age waiver. So just remember that. Um, it also gives you the address to send your package off to, and it tells you when they have to be postmarked, meaning it has to be mailed off by that date. And also everyone's favorite person, the lovely and most beautiful Miss Kemp. All right, her contact information. Uh, I'll go ahead and throw a plug in there right now. Do, no, do not bother Ms. Kemp unless you have spoken to other people that can help you. Because there's a lot of questions out there that can be answered without you having to go directly to Ms. Kemp. But if you try, you know, different uh, personnel and, and you just can't seem to get the right answer, uh, by all means, hit her up. She's actually, she, she's a great person. Great person. Okay, so that was the instruction. That was the NAV admin. Now I'm going to back away a little bit because that's general information. That's information that if you want to apply to an officer program and specifically MSC IPP, you have got to know those two documents. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the actual application and we're going to go page by page with our most recent uh, selects and they're going to talk to us about, you know, some recommendations, some guidance, maybe some barriers that they went through in regards to putting the application together. Cause I, I think we all can agree, the hardest part is starting. That was the hardest part, was getting the application together, seeing all those pages and thinking, what the heck am I doing? Like, where do I begin? But once you get going and you've got guidance, hey, it starts rolling like a snowball. So let's go ahead and uh, let me stop sharing this and let me pull up an application. And then we're going to dive into that.
And remember, at any time, you can put questions in the chat box. And we will have questions and answers at the end as well. All right. Can you all see this application? OK, cool. All right, so this is your officer application. This is a blank application. <clears throat> and again, what we're going to do is we're going to go line by line. And we're going to talk about uh, you know, each page. So on page number one, I'll start with, we'll just go in this typical order. I'll start with uh, select JG, select uh, McCarthy, then we'll go to JG, select Marone, and then we'll uh, finish with Lieutenant JG uh, Sharice. All right, good evening, everyone. Um, page one is pretty straightforward, a lot of demographic information. Um, some things that I paid attention to specifically on here was uniformity. You know, um, there's a lot of, uh, on mine particularly, there was a lot of stuff that didn't apply to me. So, you know, using that NA. Um, and also, uh, one thing that I did differently last year that I hadn't done any prior year was for number three for the community or designators, I actually put in three HCA designators um, that I was interested in. We gotta be like switch or something. <laughs> All I right. Like, time oh, that. That's okay. <laughs> no, I like I like that. Um, I agree with what you said. The the formatting. Um, that's what I got and got hit up on my first package review was making sure everything was uh, consistent. Uh, the fonts, if you were going to use all uppercase or or uppercase and lowercase, make sure it read like that throughout the whole package. I don't know if that was. Um, mostly specific to HCA because they wanted to make sure, you know, we have that super attention to detail. Um, but going through my they're like, oh, why are you using this on one page and this on another page? So little things like that, um, I would go back through and I must have looked at this package every day for like months. And I think that's important too, just giving it even an hour, um, just looking at it and just, you might catch something another day that you didn't catch the first day. Um, and you're just fine tuning it a little bit every day so it's not so overwhelming. And just, hey, I'm gonna work on page one today. Tomorrow I'm gonna work on page two and, and so on. And it'll take a while, but it, it like you say, it snowballs. Um, so scrolling down, uh, all this stuff is, is pretty self-explanatory. I would keep, keep scrolling down. Um, these will be your easiest pages of the package. Uh, keep going. Okay. And I want to make sure that, uh, did you have anything to add just to page one, JG, Shirley? I feel like they covered everything. Just stay consistent. Use your NA. Um, if it's mm -hmm. blank, put NA in there. And just make sure the smallest like you know you type fast and you're going through something every time you touch your package just read through for a quick edit take time with it just like um lieutenant jg select maroon said you have to do that because you'll be surprised what you miss if you don't take breaks and come back and just okay i'm done with that and then you don't ever look at it again and it might have been an error there absolutely and i think the i think the only one thing i'll add too because i almost made this mistake is Whenever you do have your package together, uh, do not send your package around with your full social on it. All right. Like if it's, if it's your, your draft, you can leave your full social off um, because obviously, you know, that's, that's, a, uh, that's a PI thing. And, and, and again, if you're dealing with healthcare administrators and they've officers in general, that's one thing that they're going to catch. If you're sending your package around with your full social, then what else would you do as a naval officer that you probably didn't catch? So, all right. Cool. Page two. Page two. I like that because I had that was fun at the end when you're ready to submit, going back and, and making sure all that was in there and your social was back in your final package. <laughs> Let's see. All right. So some things for me on page two. Um, again, attention to detail, uniformity. The big thing that I kind of struggle with, and I've seen a lot of people comment on this on the Facebook group, is what to do with number 19, you know, with all the PRTs, and we had a few of them that were excused. Um, so what I ended up doing is for final score, uh, I wrote in excused, 
and I left the overall score for the two that were excused on mine completely blank. Um, and I also typed in excused in run swims, sit-ups, and push-ups. But I've seen a lot of packages that still had excuse for height and weight. And I, I had uh, one of my mentors call me out in a nice way last year. He's like, didn't you still weigh in? Didn't you, you know, still do your BC? And I was like, I did, you're right. Um, another point here too, you know, any spot that you can type something out, so like your PRT coordinator, I think it makes your package look cleaner. So I actually typed out, you know, rank, warfare devices, last name, first name for my CFL at the command that I was at and just left him the opportunity to sign that. Um, I think that's it. I'll go ahead and pass it to you guys, leave some content on for you guys for this page. All right, awesome. Uh, so in regards to um, the first couple self-explanatory, 19, um, for me, I hadn't taken a PRT in a while. I was uh, pregnant, so excuse. I got a two-year-old at home. I ran straight into COVID, excuse, and I was like, oh no, they're not gonna see, you know, that I did well on my PRTs. Um, and so I did talk to a couple mentors. I ended up putting the last few PRTs that I did um, in block 19 and then attaching um, another page that showed my, my uh, PRIMS history. And so as we go through, you're gonna see a couple numbers that say, you know, fill this in and if you have more information, attach another page. Um, and so I did take full advantage of that because I didn't want the first thing that they see is I never taken a, a PRT in years. I want them to see, you know, when I was taking a PRT, these were my scores. And, and then you can refer to my PRIMS page and see, you know, why I didn't have or the last couple. Um, and then when you scroll down to the other ones, like the duty station history, um, that one's easy. That one's last five. I think it's the one after or, or come in where the next page comes in handy. Um, and for those next pages, you definitely want that to be consistent. And so, I'll, I'll touch on that when we get to one of them that show that. Um, so that's all I have for 19 and 20. Okay, so for me, um, just because there's so many different people in the Navy, right? All of us have crazy situations going on, right? Um, so COVID, you know, hit, we missed those two off top. But the one I had, the very last one that I took, I was med waived from being in a car accident. And I have never failed the PRT or anything like that. But as you see, and I think this is what Lieutenant JG Select Maroon was referring to, there is after your personal statements, they say address any waivers, address anything, you know, age, education, anything you're asking for. So I went very in depth with, hey, I, I was, I had an excellent in my PRT in 2018. I was waived you know, because it went back that far because that was when we only had to do one a year if you got an excellent or above. So I went in and said, hey, due to a motor vehicle accident, sustaining whiplash in April, away from the PRT. Took the next one, away from push-ups. So I went very into depth with that. And I even went as far as to say, I'm willing to submit to a physical readiness test if you have any questions or concerns. Also have attached record of PRIMS data excellent or above, right? So you just want to go that extra mile because you don't want them to have any questions about you and your wherewithal and how you'll be able to handle anything um, in leadership. And for, um, so the PRT itself, I actually just did all ease because that's what I was getting anyway. And I put excused, whatever I was excused in. Um, and, you know, the dates, like, hey, cycle was excused. You know, I just made sure that they knew I was marking E because that's what I normally score. And if we were taking it, that's what I would expect to score. And I laid that out um, prior. So the one that I want to go into is the duty assignments. I've applied a few times, and this one was one of the things that I tweaked this time, which I think uh, made sense, and I never thought about it before. So what I what I did was I went into, you know, when it asked for your position of primary duty, before I was saying ALPO, uh, this, just one thing. I didn't go into, try to fill up that block. 
So what I did this time, I was like, hey, this is, I put the dates in there. That was all fine. But the position and primary duty, I think that really made a difference this time because I would put like CCC, Command Career Counselor, formally manages the career development program for 1600 sailors or um, dental assistant, ALPO, led how many people I led, how many clinics. I would fill that up so that they know, okay, she's a leader. Whereas before I was like, okay, you're an ALPO. You could have just got that by default. You know what I mean? So I tried to put in some little buzzwords and some plugs. Even when I was in the reserves and I was at the NOSC, I would talk about the leadership that I had in there. So you may not have a lot to fill up because I'm I'm very new and I've only been in active duty for five years. So it's I didn't have a lot to give to that. So the things I did have, I embellished, but I didn't really embellish. I just used the room I had, if that makes sense. Awesome. Awesome. I, I love it. Great story. And I think the, the only the only thing that I'll add here, I, I took notes and I wrote down warfare and PRT. And I, I wrote down that for a reason because, I, and I'll tie this at the end too, I think a lot of uh, sailors, when, when they think of putting in an officer package, they think, well, um, I'm just going to put an officer package, but I'm not going to worry about enlisted. And it's like, well, if you're at a platform where you can get a warfare call, this is another reason for you to get your warfare call. You know, if you don't if you don't get those warfare pins and you have the opportunity, then you you've now made yourself less competitive for someone against someone who did have an opportunity. And this even matters even if you're like at an instructor duty where you can get an MTS, get that qual. Um, and then PRT, the PRT matters. It's back like we're doing it, so it matters. You know, and so I just want to throw that out there. Other than that, I have nothing else to add. All right, so next page. All right, so on page three, um, top half is pretty straightforward. What? I think just, you know, using the, um, uh, what am I trying to say? Uniformity, uh, how you're formatting everything. And I don't know if this brought, was brought up already, but your dates. So on every page, if it's a date for something, it should be the exact same format throughout the entire application. Um, down into personal history awards, so some of you are going to have more than four awards. Um, I had created essentially like a extension sheet or, or whatnot that I attached to this and I put all of my awards and I've had, I've heard different things, NAM and above, uh, flock and above, um, people putting on MOVSM, things of that nature. I just went with flock and above. I put them all on there. And then I also put that on my, uh, my separate sheet that I attached uh, with this as well. Going into 25 for service schools, I kept this very straightforward. I think I just looked in NSIPs and literally put the last three service or four service schools that I had attended. Um, correspondence courses, I think this is where you can kind of separate yourself. There's a, there's so many out there that are good and, and are going to be beneficial. Um, once you get selected and showing that you're, you're trying to get you know, as much knowledge as you possibly can about the officer community, community or, or developing your leadership toolbox, if you will. Um, you've got advanced leader development course out there, all those new uh, leader development courses that are really great. Um, all the PPMEs, I did the entire officer PPMEs. So I put those in there. I took a quality assurance officer and supervisor course. And I did BM doc. I think it changed now. It's not BM doc anymore, which is the basic military department officers course. Um, I forget the new name of the course, but you know, you can really fill that space in with a lot of great content. Um, and I've even seen packages for block 26 where somebody had like an attachment to go with number 26 where they had like 10, 20, 30 extra courses. They were just getting after it, doing all of this, uh, you know, all the leadership courses and a lot of officer development courses just to make their package kind of stronger, if you will. Awesome. Um, yeah, definitely agree with what you're saying on that. Um, scrolling back up, when you mentioned the date formats being the same, make sure you follow the date formats that are given. So if it's telling you, you know, day, month, year, put it in day, month, year. Um, that's the other type of attention to detail mm -hmm. thing. Um, the, so what I was talking about earlier was that attach separate sheet if more space is necessary. Um, for me, what I did, I just, I literally copied the box. Um, PDF edit now is great. <laughs> I copied the box from this application, put it on a, a Word document, 
and I kept that same format um, on a separate enclosure. And so if it was number 24, uh, I kept, you know, personal awards continued in that same format. And then I had the same block award command date awarded on my attachment sheet. So I don't know if that helped. It's just those little things, um, you know, that make it look, you know, pretty, pretty much. Um, another thing to add with like, uh, organization, what I did, just what I'm thinking about it, is the um, enclosures. Uh, I know everyone does this different, and I saw a ton of packages up in Ms. Kim's office. Um, I added an enclosure page over each one. Um, these are just little, again, HCA, uh, OCD things probably, but if I had a section, each enclosure had a cover page. Um, and then I tabbed them out as well. So I would have, these are just little food for thought. This was my first time applying. Um, happy to say I got picked up first time. But I'm thinking, you know, if someone is on a board and they're looking through a million packages, what is going to make it easier for that reviewer? And for me, that was looking at this package all together. It's a lot of papers, right? So if you can clean that up for the reviewer, separate it enclosure even the uh, going the extra mile and putting a tab when you got my package you were like hey i want to look at this i know this is in section whatever you would just pull the tab up and go straight to that section so little things like that i think make you stand out um and i'm sure it makes it easier on the on the reviewers um that's all i think i have for this page You guys brought up some really great points. Um, so I don't have too much to add just on correspondence courses. I did, I did like, I would put like the PMP course, those 35 hours that were required for you to get your PMP. Um, I had done the city program biomedical investigators research because I was on a huge project when I was in dental before I came to NMRTC Bethesda. So I put that on there. Um, everybody's always excited about that because a lot of people don't really do that. And I took advantage of all of the free courses that were going around during COVID. Uh, contact tracing, I did improving global health, focusing on quality and safety, anything having to do with healthcare in a space that would help us maneuver as we go into this new realm, I really took advantage of. And also, uh, I did the same thing, like with Chief, I made, I thought about if I'm going through all these packages, what's going to make it easy i tabbed everything with the fedex got them made very nice and just stuck them in there divided everything and because if it was me i'm like okay i don't know i can't find it moving on to the next you know and i don't want them to do that right so you do want to do those little things that's going to be like a showstopper I'm like okay okay they got this okay i like that so that's really all i had to add not too much for this page the the money's on the next page so that's what i'm waiting for <laughs> awesome i think the only thing i'm, I'm gonna add for this because some people will miss it. Uh, pay attention to detail. You've heard them say it already. I, I, I see numerous people talking about, I got to get high school transcripts. And it clearly says not required for MSC IPP. So why are you contacting that high school? I don't know. It's beyond me. Don't contact them. You don't need it. That's one less thing that you have to look for. So you got your college uh, transcripts. And since I'm on the topic of transcripts, at least as of last year, Yes, your, your transcripts can be unofficial, meaning the college can send them to you. You can open it and send it in with your package. It doesn't have to be like mailed from the college to uh, Ms. Kemp or anyone. You can actually open it and put it in your package. So yeah, do not add the high school's transcripts in there when it says not required. That's all I have. Next page, moving along. All oh, right. this stuff. JG, Shirley, do you want to do a little reverse and you start this page off? Had myself on mute. I wasn't ready, but yes, that's cool. <laughs> so um, I have actually applied quite a few times. I came in with a degree, um, but every year I learned something different, right? So my extracurricular activities have really evolved. So my very first one I can talk about, it was like, I didn't have a lot of active duty experience. So I was like, oh yes, I cheered in college and my sorority and how, but I did the leadership that I did in it, right? Uh, they weren't biting off that because they didn't care about that, right? So every year I would ask, what, what do you think makes sense? What do you think, 
you know, people are looking at. So one of the things I know set me apart this year was I became involved in ACHE, which is American College of Health Executives, right? Healthcare Executives. I not only became involved, I became involved in the Navy Region Advisory Council on that. And I served as the secretary for one of the RECs, so, which is Region Advisory Council, sorry. And um, it was advanced deck plate education and local chapter involvement. And that allowed me to meet people, hear what they're actually talking about, hear what's important, and hear where the Navy's going. So um, I did that. And I really focused on leadership to show that I'm a leader, that I was either hand selected as a leader or I took and led something and I show innovation. So like while we're in COVID posture, I was in charge of EAP for my command. So I actually did a virtual EAP and helped support the whole MEPS across 40 something, 50 states, 50 different countries, just 150 people, just all these people, right? So there's like, okay, you coordinated all this. I coordinated every piece of it. I, I did everything from the bottom up, but you put that on there. And even though it's enlisted, it's showing project management skills. It's showing that you can think things through and what's the different moving pieces that, you know, you're going to be trying to do. Um, I always want to do something that shows big Navy involvement. So I put Sapper on there because I was at the time a Sapper victim advocate. And so I always think that that's important. And some people are like, well, everybody's a Sapper, nobody wants to do it, but you also, it's your application. So you do always take advice, but you have to put forth what you want to represent. And so Sapper was very important to me and it always has been. So I always make sure that I highlight it because I'm very proud of the work that I've been able to do um, for a program like that. And then um, I talked about things I put together. So when you think about extracurricular activities, my thinking has evolved. I was thinking like, okay, I'm in college. What are my extracurricular activities? What are the things I did? So I went to special abilities and put the things I did in college. Like, okay, advanced level gymnast, cheerleading coach, right? Or I put um, certified battlefield acupuncturist because no other enlisted person is doing that, right? Now that's not healthcare admin, but okay, that is a special ability, right? And then I would put, dance minister, um, flute minor, I could play all this music, right? Because they're like, that's different. You want to give them something that's okay. She's doing stuff for the Navy, but look at what a well-rounded person she is. So I really honed in on this and I, I really filled up each of these little spots in 27 is full. It goes all the way to the end on everything that I presented. I didn't leave any blank space because I wanted them to know what they were getting with me. So um, I would suggest that you do that. And then if you don't feel like you have special abilities, you put something like, okay, um, public speaking. You know, you don't think about that, but if you get up and you do muster or you do training, you're public speaking. So you wanna talk about that. You, and then just get involved with different things that's gonna really enhance your worth and what you're gonna bring to the Navy because you're showing them what can you do to enhance the core that you're going to apply for. So that's really what I did on this page. And I had no civil or military offenses. So all those say NA, just, just a word there. So that's all I had on that one. Who would like to go next? All right, I'll jump in. Um, I'm trying to re recall exactly what I put there, but um, definitely fill in every, every block. Don't leave any blanks. Um, you can, you, it's all in how you word what you do. We do these things, we have these uh, extracurricular activities, we have these special abilities. It's really just finding the, the right way to word it um, and make it sound like something that, you know, they need. <laughs> so th this is like a big old resume, like you need me because I can do this. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think, I think when in extracurricular activities, I put, um, you know, some of the positions I held in committees, if I was the president, um, you know, of the first class petty officer association. Uh, and then what you did leading that I was, um, again, H, you made a good point that um, ATHT getting involved in that and um, being a member definitely for our program HCA was, uh, was big. Um, I'm trying to think special abilities. 
I have to pull my package up. Like, I think I, I went into more of the admin special abilities there and just kind of uh, expanded on, you know, I've worked with this system, I've worked with these Navy systems and, uh, and this, is, this is what I did with them. Um, what's below 29? Um, oh yeah, they should be NA, right? <laughs> the rest of those are easy, they should be NA in all those boxes. Um, I'll turn it over to you, John, with the, the top two. So just uh, both of you had fantastic points there. I want to drive two points home that both of you already said. One thing is if you're, if you're um, you know, if you're doing HCA, you should be involved with the ACHE. And if you don't know what that is yet, and you're a, you know, potential applicant for next year, look up your local chapter and start going to those meetings. Um, another thing is like this space gives you a lot of area to type and utilize that. And I kind of approached it with like the eval mindset. Um, what did I do or what was it? What was the impact? What was the results, right? Um, if you're doing something and you're not getting any results or, you know, it's, it's kind of useless or it's just not as impactful in my opinion. Um, ACHE was really big for me. There's a lot of stuff to do between your local chapters, like JG Shirley was saying. Um, you've got Navy Leaps, that is a symposium that's going to be happening next month in conjunction with the ACHE uh, National Congress. Uh, so that was really big for me. I was involved in my local chapter in San Antonio. Um, and also, like in extracurricular activities, this is an opportunity for you to maybe create something. So I, I was in San Antonio when I got selected. There wasn't a lot of HCAs around, but there was a lot of staff um, at the schoolhouse, schoolhouses there that were potential applicants. So I created a mentorship committee and over the course of three years there, I'd gotten uh, nine people selected for various commissioning programs. So it was like, I went there just with an open mindset and literally because of block 27, I created that committee. And it was one of the things I was like most proud of to put on my application. Um, I think you guys already both said, you know, being involved in your peer groups, you know, uh, SCPOA, FCPOA, CPOA, that sort of thing. If you're doing any leadership, again, the impact on that. Um, special abilities for me, if, you know, thinking outside the box, one thing I was an instructor at core school, so I had master training specialists on there. I was uh, adjunct faculty at USIS at the time. Uh, so just be creative with these areas and utilize the entire section. You get a, a, a lot of characters to input in there. Don't leave a lot of white space if you can. Yeah, I, I think the only thing that I'll add is the, the difference in the first time I applied to the second time was when I had a, I had a senior officer in the community look at my package and, and when she looked at my extracurricular activities and my special abilities, uh, two things she mentioned. One was, and I, and I didn't look at it this way, but she was like, you notice they're numbered one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three. She was like, put your most mm -hmm. impactful, most important uh, extracurricular activity and or special ability in number one, and then work down the list until you get down to number five or number three. So when she looked at what I had, you know, she reviewed it. She was like, you know, this one is good, but you got this one at number five. When this one is probably the one we're looking at the most, to be a healthcare administrator. So put this as your number one. And yeah. then this number four should be at your number two and so forth and so on. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm not gonna sit here and do the whole piggyback thing. So uh, the only other thing I had was number two was, uh, especially for the special abilities, think soft skills. I think that's where, especially if you're a junior seller applying, you don't think soft skills a lot, think soft skills as well. Like, what are you good at? Like, are you good at speaking, motivational speaking? Are you good at speaking? Are you, um, you know, another thing could be spreadsheets, right? Excel spreadsheets. Maybe you're good at that. Um, um, it's kind of like if you have a LinkedIn account, there's a little section that ask about skills and soft skills and things. You could literally pull from there and put these in your special, like what sets you apart at the end of the day? What makes you different from someone else? If you're applying with so many other people that are awesome, what could be the one thing that makes you different? Like, I know I'm not that great at Excel spreadsheets, so you probably would have been better than me. Who knows? Uh, maybe you're good at finance. Maybe you're great at accounting. Put that in there, right? Like, just think about the things that you're good at, and that could be your special ability. And that's all I have to add to that. Uh, I will say under the offenses and NJPs, so I actually did have a shipmate at my previous command that 
had something in this section, and then I know you, I know y'all are gonna talk about it later. She spoke on it in her uh, section after the personal statement, um, and actually had a CO write a letter of recommendation, the one that NJP'd her, and she got selected. So do not let this deter you if it's in the past. Of course, if it happened right now, that's a problem, right? You can't, you can't apply right now, but if it's in the past, don't let it deter you. All right, next one. This is easy. All right, I'll start off this one. Pretty straightforward, um, page five here. My thing was uniformity, right? Making sure, I had I had to apply six times. I didn't get it selected on, until my sixth time, so uh, I even had to put an enclosure on there, but just making sure that all of my years were separated properly in, in, uh, in ascending order, descending order on my non-selections. Um, I, I kind of spoke about this earlier, but any space that you can eliminate hand jamming stuff, type it in. So like on everything for the secure, security manager's portion, I typed out, I got with uh, my security manager, I got all the information from her, typed it out, and then the only thing that she had to do was sign it, wet signature to. Um, that's really all I have on this section. I don't know if anybody else has anything to add. Nah, I don't. This is really straightforward. Yeah, nothing to add on that one. Same. Okay. I think we can all agree here. Make sure you sign and date the page. <laughs> Make sure it's a good looking signature. Make sure you sign and date the page. <laughs> all right. All right, here we go. The bread and butter. Who wants to go first? I can go first. Um, so like I was just saying, I applied many times and uh, I think it was Amethyst was saying, or, uh, Lieutenant JG Select Marone, you look at this package so much. I can't tell you how many times I would even be, you know, late at work with no one else in the building, just staring at the screen. I've probably done over 40 to 50 versions of this. If you look at the very first application that I did years ago to the one that I did last year when I got selected, they are completely different. Um, and I would stare at it, I'd read it over a million times and then, you know, change words out here and there. I think the main thing on this and is one, make it unique and make it your, your own, right? Um, it asks exactly what it wants you to talk about. There's going to be a lot of people on the Facebook groups asking, Hey, can I have, you know, your package? If you were a recent select X, Y, and Z, if you're just going to copy someone else's work who was a select, I mean, I'm not saying that that's a bad idea, but, you know, it doesn't make you unique and it kind of shows, you know, what kind of work ethic you're going to have. Approach this in the manner that you want this to, to be yours. This should be your baby. Um, you know, so I kept mine short and sweet and I've, you're going to hear a million different things on what you should do for this. I've also sent this to a bunch of mentors. You send it to five mentors, you'll get 10 things back, right? Um, JG Shirley said earlier, you're going to get a lot of feedback at the end of the day, it's your application. So utilize what you want to do. Um, I also kind of approached the bottom section in a unique manner, which a lot of people told me not to do. So I broke it down with like an opening small paragraph. And then I had honor in all caps and exclamation. And then I typed some out the same with courage and commitment. And every time I'd say honor or courage or commitment, I capitalized it. I had a lot of officers tell me, don't do that. But I wanted to be unique. I wanted my personal statements to stand out. So I kept them in there. Um, the main, and that's kind of my two cents on this. Um, I'm also, if anybody needs help with this, I'm willing to give critiques. I'm personally not the best when it comes to syntax, grammar, English wasn't my strong suit when I was going to school. Um, my wife is actually very good with that. So every change that I would do, I'd be like, hey, babe, this is what I did today on my personal statement. She proofread it, start marking it up, red, you know, on there. Get somebody who you trust, like one person who can read it over. Um, sometimes when you are staring at this for a very long period of time and multiple times, you might miss stuff, periods, uh, commas, rewording stuff. So get somebody who can really read through it 
and can critique that grammar and that syntax. Um, I'll pass it to one of you guys. All right, I'll, I'll go back in order now. <laughs> um, I wanted to jump back real quick, but just on the, um, before we get too far, the signatures, um, now that I have my package in front of me, I did have digital signatures, so I don't know, um, you may get different words from different people, but my security, um, my signature, uh, I did digital signatures. So I think that's just kind of where we're going now with most documents. So um, obviously it didn't deter them. <laughs> uh, so just, I just wanted to make a note of that. So you don't have to think, you have to have one versus the other. Um, the personal statement is, this page is probably the hardest page out of this whole application. Um, because you're, you want to sound genuine and you just, I swear writing this multiple times, I was like, this doesn't sound like me. It doesn't sound genuine. Oh, I revised this thing like 20 times. Um, and so don't be discouraged when you, when you write it up, you know, I say, get it on paper, get it out there, what you think you want to say, uh, and then start like you said, sending it to other people for them to give you feedback. And, and so that's what I did. So mine looks completely different from, from the first version that I did. Um, and then honestly, I wasn't even 100% good with it when I submitted it because it's hard to, to put, it's like an eval. It's hard to put into a few lines everything you want to say. Um, so, I mean, I felt okay with it, but I was like, well, I went into this like I'm gonna apply probably three times and I'll just keep getting better every time <laughs> and uh, okay. so I yeah again I I'm glad we have you know a range of people who have applied from me one time lucky I, I guess uh, to uh, six times um, but I was just like let me get it out here because I'm so tired of looking at this package and I'll I'll make it better next time <laughs> so I'm glad I didn't have to um, on my uh, on my second part, I like what you were saying, making that part unique, the, the honor, courage, and commitment. Um, just looking at mine, I did add a little personal touch there. Um, I kind of just went, you know, honor, courage, and commitment, what those meant to me. And then I talked about, um, you know, my home, my husband, my family. I kind of just made it very personal to me. So I feel like that number one, that's where your, your, your Navy, your military, you know, you're, you're selling that side. Um, but number two is who are you, uh, you know, and, and make, give them something that shows them who you are. I kept getting told that by mentors, like, who are you? This doesn't tell me who you are. And I'm looking at them like, I don't know who I am either. <laughs> I'm trying to write this on paper. So don't be discouraged. Just, you know, keep looking at it and and really once you're done with that one it sh it should feel like you know what i i feel comfortable with this this is who i am this talks about me my family what's important to me and i think that's what they want to see there on to you shirley so i'll uh no maybe i won't so i'll try my best to keep it quick this is very important the easiest thing to do is if you look under what number one just like Lieutenant J.G. Select McCarthy said, it tells you what you need to address. Mm -hmm. Reason applying for a commission, personal and professional goals, strengths, personal characteristics you possess, which will contribute to success in the programs to which you are applying. And you can address anything else, right? When I first started writing this, I've applied four times. I applied uh, every, I was an E4 coming in from the reserves. I applied because I was just like, that was my whole goal. I just wanted to be, you know, a healthcare administrator. So I applied every time. This looks nothing <laughs> like my first one. My first one, I didn't have any type of military experience to add. So I spoke about a lot of what I did in the civilian world, trying to show leadership, but they're like, you haven't even proved yourself, right? So um, you have to make sure that you are doing things, even if you're not operational, you have to make sure you're doing things that make sense with where you're trying to go. So make sure you answer the questions um, because even now I, I, the difference, I'm, I am a writer. Like 
English is my thing. I can, you give me something like write this in three minutes. I can do it in two. I'm very serious. This was probably the hardest thing that I've had to write. So um, I, I challenge you write something and don't try to stick within 250 words. Answer each question and then take time, go through and say, okay, this doesn't really need to be here. Just chop it, you know, take time to chop it. It's not something that you can really rewrite. So the good thing about having a package and applying more than once, you just need to tweak it when you apply again, right? So I, you know, I didn't have as much stress this time at all, especially with my personal statement, because this time around, I had the ACHE, which I really honed in on because it was such a big part of what I was doing. I saw the relevancy of it. I saw where it would make sense. So when it asked about my personal and professional goals, hey, personally, I'm trying to serve and make sure I'm doing what I need to do for the Navy healthcare system, right? I'm trying to use my strengths to do that. Professionally, I'm trying to pursue a fellow candidacy with ACHE. They're like, oh, okay. Well, that's good. That's a great professional goal. You don't have to say, I mean, you can, but you don't have to say, I want to be the next Rear Admiral Swap. You know what I mean? You can keep it tailored because you're going to grow, right? So just do things that, that make sense, I would say. You, um, my first paragraph talks about um, my mother because my mother uh, passed away in childbirth and she was on active duty, right? So that is very important to me. So even when I would send it to other people, that first paragraph has never changed. I, it has been tweaked. I've added some words, but that's, hey, this is why I'm here. This is why I'm so passionate about it. Whatever I can do without being hands-on as a doctor, I want to do, you know, I want to use my strengths to influence this, right? So even though some people tell me all oh, healthcare administrators, that's, that's, type, that's like a me step thing. We're not looking for you to pull on our heart. Like that's fine, but this is my package, right? So I'm gonna give you a little bit of me, but I'm gonna give you the professional me. I'm gonna give you what I'm gonna bring you and the strengths that I have. And you just have to find a way to weave that web. So um, I say that just make start out by answering the questions. If you answer the questions, you're going to get an amazing personal statement. I read so many where people are talking about something else that happened six years ago and they they had a flat tire and then they had an epiphany when it rained and they were stuck. And it's not really, but it doesn't make sense. And it's like the whole statement, right? So you want to do that. That's why it's there. And that's what, that is what they're looking for. I, Talk to people that sat on the board. So the next honor, courage, and commitment, I will honestly say I wrote the best honor, courage, and commitment statement. I never changed it. I never changed it in all the times because it's honor, courage, and commitment. I wrote a nice little blurb to say, hey, this is how I live my life in and out of uniform. And then I talked about what each one meant to me and how I would implement it as an officer, as a commissioned okay. officer. So that's what I did. Um, so, um, and again, I, every time that I give someone that nobody really touches it because that's what brought me to the Navy. So they're like, okay, she, you know, what you talk about on that. Let's get this other part together. So <laughs> <laughs> I would really, um, that one has remained the same. I have literally never changed it. It's, it's pretty good. If anybody wants to read it, I'll send it to you, <laughs> but that's all that I have. Awesome, man. That all three of those are great. And, and I, 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 I had to sit back and laugh because as all of you know, and anybody else that has put these packages together, uh, you probably have draft on draft on draft of personal statements saved on your computer somewhere. <laughs> and it's just, I'm just laughing because I can remember the, the late nights and early mornings and days of just drafting stuff, drafting stuff, re-editing, sending it out. So yes, I, I was talking to somebody yesterday and, and he was starting his package and I told him, I said, Start with your personal statement. This is going to take you the longest amount of time to do. Start your personal statement. If, if you are applying for this program this year, you're already behind the curve if you haven't started your personal statement. You need to start that like yesterday. So go ahead and start this now. Um, I am not an English major, all right? So I'll throw a plug out there. Grammarly is amazing. If you don't have Grammarly Premium, get it, all right? It definitely, it, it works wonders. Uh, and then the only thing I'll say too, because they've already said it, is this is your personal statement, keyword personal. The big, the biggest difference between my first one and my second one, which had my second one had to be drawn out of me by another senior officer that read it, was it was personal, but I left out some things that were 
even more personal. That was actually in a letter of recommendation. And when he mentioned it, he was like, he read my letter of recommendation. He said, Chief, why didn't you put this in your personal statement? And I was like, I didn't think about putting it in there. He's like, this is what we want to hear. So all I will say to you is make it personal. That doesn't mean you have to be emotional. And that doesn't mean that you have to make someone cry. That just means they are trying to figure out who you are. So when you answer these questions, that first one, your reason for applying, what is your reason? What is your why? Start with why. Read that book, by the way, Simon Sinek, Start With Why. It'll help you find your purpose. That's all I got, because we got to move forward. We're already at nine. I don't want to keep anybody too long. All right, so next page. Um, I actually didn't have anything for this page. I've seen people put enclosures in here, explain specific situations. Maybe they had failed the class. Um, maybe they got NGP'd X, Y, Z. And it also has, you know, other things. Uh, you can re request waivers in there as well. Um, so I just simply put an NA. I don't know if anybody here put anything in that section that they can speak upon. No, I'm, mine is NA as well. This is where I put the information about my PT test. So like I was telling you guys that, you know, I had a med wave and then I was, ex I was excused before that, you know, I just wrote it out like, hey, I was so stellar. It's not what I put, but it's what I'm trying to tell you. I was so stellar. I didn't even have to take one. But then when it came time, I got hurt. Yeah. But then I went yeah. back, right? So you have to put it professionally, but that's pretty much what I'm saying. I'm like, hey, don't fret because I'll take it again if you want me to, you know? So that's, that's pretty much what I told them here. Um, but of course I put during the cycle and I passed this in accordance with such and such. So um, anything you want to talk about. So one thing that I was going to address here, but I decided against it, but you could if you want to. Um, my undergrad and my master's grades are very different. When I was an undergrad, I was an undergrad. And if you were an undergrad before you were in the military, you understand. So I just had fun. I was a student athlete. I was just living my best life, right? So um, undergrad, um, my grades were a little bit lower. But when I was in um, my master's degree, I had straight A's. But then I had one C, and the C was in accounting. So I was going to um, talk about that. But I was like, I'm not even going to address it because it's one C and I have a 3.8, like, I'm not going to address it. So I didn't, I left that alone. I was like, Hey, you can see where the difference is. You see what I had here, a 3.0, you see what I had here, a 3.8, you see where I've gone to, then you can see, this is what's important. You need to know that I'm able to complete the mission that I'm able to go into war. I'm able to go and do what I need to do physically. So I thought that was, so the most important thing that you think they'll have a question on, I think you should put it there. And we have a hand raised by uh, JG, Lieutenant JG Young. If you're out there. Yes. Hi, good evening. I'm uh, Lieutenant JG Young. I just got selected uh, for MSCAPP this year as well. Um, I just want to address about this portion. Um, what I added to this portion was like, uh, I got selected for direct commission two years ago. And I couldn't get commission because of my uh, conditional release got denied. So in that the specific uh, portion, I explained why uh, I got selected and then why I couldn't get commission. And I added the, you know, the list of the results and everything. I explained why, but that was my portion of it. So mm -hmm. you, can, you can make it your own. I mean, you can explain different things and it was not nothing negative and it was just explaining the board why i couldn't get commission because i added on the portion the, the times you applied and i added that that i got selected but i put like a little star and then that's how i explained on this portion so i have to say awesome thank you for that that's a good point okay and if you're applying for msc program i'm just gonna highlight it for ldo cw applicants only so if you're filling this out and you're applying for this program, all right, pay attention to details. All right. Uh, so next we're going to get into the, and this is, we're actually coming to the end, which is good because I don't want to lose too many people for a question and answers. So we're going to get into the CO's endorsement. We'll go around and see how you all, we don't have to talk about where you ranked out or anything, but you can kind of talk to about how you came up with your endorsement and things of that nature. Um. 
All right, so we're going to skip. Are we skipping page nine then? Uh, well, I would say, yeah, because typically that's where your CO is going to endorse you there. Yeah. That's, that's something that you want to add. I, can I just make a quick point? Uh, so just like uh, Gigi McCauley saying, you know, you're not going to you're not going to see this until your application is sent off. Uh, however, the first couple of applications I had, my career counselor had made some uh, mistakes. They didn't add DSN facts and they did all caps and the rest of my package wasn't all caps. So the last two applications, I went to my career counselor early in the process and I just explained to them that situation. You know, if there was going to be a blank in there, it had to have an NA in that spot. If there was a fax, DSN, work phone number, it had to be in this specific format and, and, uh, and whatnot. So just having that good communication with your career counselor, if they're the ones that are putting your, your package together, I think can pay dividends in the long run. Um, I've also been told you should be hitting all outstandings, if not all outstandings, maybe a couple excellence. You know, I think you do have some sway in, in where you do rank out. If I'll say this, if your commanding officer doesn't know you at all, if you have no FaceTime with them, nothing, you know, what do you expect to get? So I'm not saying go and be the teacher's pet, but I was very frank. I've been through multiple commands on this process. Uh, when I checked into my last command that I applied from and I got selected, I set up a meeting with my commanding officer just to, you know, introduce myself once, uh, you know, I was new there. And then also once we got a new commanding officer at the command, again, I set up a, a meeting, introduced myself, let her know my intentions, X, Y, and Z. It was actually a really good mentor, mentorship moment that I had with her. Um, just building that relationship, you know, and, and I think the rest of your package and especially like extracurricular activities and some of that stuff, they'll tie in to this and, and where you rank out. Is any, I don't know if anybody else has anything quick to add to that. I don't have anything for this page. Anybody else? Okay. So what, how, how did you, I guess my question to you all is how did you all go about getting your endorsement? What, how did you all do that? Um, so I was fortunate at my last command that our commanding officer allowed us to submit a draft for this. Um, and I, I had gotten, you know, multiple over, over the years and I approached it in a very specific manner. I had an opening and a closing with asterisks, just like an eval. Um, and I kind of broke it down systematically. You know, the first paragraph is, uh, you know, what I was applying for with some call outs in there and some cap with some, um, you know, all caps. Uh, the second one talks about some of my, uh, the second paragraph talks about some of my strengths that I had, um, some of my leadership. Uh, the third paragraph talks about my sustained superior performance with some of my SOQs that I've won, Warfare qualifications, deployments. Uh, ACHE award that I won, that sort of thing. Fourth paragraph, uh, the CEO, the fourth and fifth paragraph, so the fourth and the closing uh, uh, fifth paragraph, my committee officer completely changed and she completely personalized and made it her thing. And, um, and yeah, so the, really the only things that they kind of kept were like my first three paragraphs and she, they actually kept my opening and, and my closing. And I'll jump on, um, mine reads kind of similar. Like my first paragraph has the, the all caps, some of the all caps um, call outs, um, meeting the requirements with the OpNav instruction, the, the mm -hmm. recent NAV admin and the um, OpNav physical fitness standards. I don't know if that's just standard. Um, I did get that from another package. Um, and then my first paragraph talks about the, you know, the working for the commander. I'm at a small command. Um, so for me, it was a little easier to uh, have that relationship with my uh, commanding officer. Um, so I, I think that helps, but I'm also was one of one. Uh, so some people say, oh, you know, that's, that might hurt you. I, it didn't. So if you're at a small command, a um, little word of encouragement, you can still break out. You can still do great things. I picked up chief and officer at a small command. Um, so it wasn't about those numbers and it was about, you know, what you did and, and, and how that showed. So, um, I call it, it includes, you know, winning sale of the year, winning sale of the year for the enterprise. I do think that that 
plays a factor. Um, you know, if you are winning sale of the quarter, winning sale of the year, you don't have to go up to these high levels, but it shows that, you know, you have that leadership and, and you're striving. Um, so that I think is important to, to note in there. Um, some of the, you know, it kind of, my next block kind of read, read like an eval, like some of my accomplishments, what I've done. And then again, the ending, you know, easy select now, some of those capital call outs again, best, most qualified. Um, so some of those ping words that, you know, you want your commanding officer to, to say to that board, um, absolute highest recommendation. So there's kind of these key words that, you know, they might be looking for from your, your commanding officer. Um, and you want those to be strong. So I drafted mine and my commanding officer didn't change much on mine, honestly. A few things here and there, but for the most part, it was pretty much what I submitted. So um, I'll keep mine brief. Uh, my CEO and I have a, a an amazing relationship, actually. Um, BNCCC, we were very forward facing, um, but even when I was at a small command, I knew my CEO. And I've only been at um, a very small command. Um, which I've had the pleasure of being involved in so many things and I was supported in doing so many things that I always was able to know the CEO and the CEO to know me. And I think that's just important anyway. So what Lieutenant JG McCarthy said, if you're going somewhere new and these are your intentions, simple EA set a meeting. It's, it's paramount. You have to do that. Um, but because I was so, I was CCC command and dot coordinator, my CEO knows me very well. And um, we met, I'm, I'm coordinating, you know, I'm the CCC for the MSCI PPI. I coordinated everything. So he didn't have any questions for me. He read it, he signed it. And he was like, you, this is good. I mean, just read it and, and rolled. But that is, you want to have that type of confidence, right? Where he's like, okay, yep, I, I agree with everything I said. Um, the only thing I did different because I am newer in the Navy and the Navy, uh, I use all my pretty verbiage here and I wrote mine like I would a letter of recommendation from corporate America. So, um, cause that's kind of where I came from. So I wanted to embellish. So I did of course put, you know, per the reference, she's within body standard, blah, blah, blah. The opening, I used that. And then I had a closer, but I used a lot of beautiful language, a lot of wonderful adjectives that I wish we had a room for in our evals. I took this opportunity to just, uh, it was hard because it's hard to sing your praises. Like I know what I do, but let me act like I'm somebody else looking at me and write it, like just sing your own praises. And it's not good if the CEO gets it and is like, well, you, you want to be realistic because you're like, is he going to think this of me that I've written? Is he going to know this of me that I've written? Because um, my CEO, even though NMRTC Bethesda is large, he reads everything. He pours over everything. And so, um, but I was blessed to have that relationship. So if you don't have the relationship with your CEO, it's a perfect time to contact the EA tomorrow or Monday and see when you can get in and have a meeting and start to get to know your CEO because this is very important like this I mean if you don't have his recommendation like they're gonna be like okay right so that's that's what I did and that was just how mine came about awesome I think what I want to add here for for uh you know, sailors that are that are that are gonna watch this is this is your bread and butter. Like this is one of your, whenever I would explain to, so mind you, I didn't say this in the beginning, but I was a officer, medical officer recruiter for three years and, and a career counselor as well. But whenever I would explain these packages, this is one of your four main pieces to the puzzle as far as what is very important in your package and that's your CEO's endorsement. And again, like I said in the beginning, what you do now in your enlisted career matters. Let me say that. What you are doing now in your enlisted career matters. All right. I, you know, because again, I hear sailors say it all the time. Well, I want to go be an officer. I want to go be this. I want to be that. But you're not performing where you are. And if you listen to everything that, you know, all the selects or I'm sorry, the commission officers just said, everything they spoke about is performance, whether it's sailor of the year, sailor of the quarter, 
or 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 building that relationship with that CEO. And typically, you're going to build that relationship with that CEO based on your performance. Typically, now if you have a, a you know a pathway because you work in the same office, okay, that's a different ball game. But if you're out there performing, that CEO is going to hear about you. That CEO is going to find out about you. So make sure you're performing right this is where your evals come in this is where you're you're making the mission you're meeting the mission you're meeting the mark and so when it is, when it does come time and i wrote in capital letters on my my piece of paper over here the ceo will not change much if you are performing so when you write your endorsement and you send it up if they sign it that's because they already know about you what you just wrote they're like yes this person is doing that and i had that same just like all of you said i had that same relationship with my ceo but if you don't have that performance, then when you write that beautiful endorsement, yeah, let's let's sit down and talk about this. So you said you did all this, but where is this? So definitely make sure you're you're doing what you need to do on the enlisted side. If you're an HM2, you know, do the things you need to do, become HM1. If you're an HM1, do the things you need to do, become a chief. You know, so forth and so on. But yes, for my CEO's endorsement, I, I wrote mine, sent it up. My CEO sat down with me. We had a conversation a personal conversation and you know it went from there so i have nothing else to add on the co's endorsement it is very huge uh we're not going to talk about this page <laughs> because we already talked about this page <laughs> so you do not do the high school transcripts and actually that is really going to bring us as far as the application goes uh well you know your college transcripts we talked about that that's going to bring us to the end of uh the application for us. So with that being said, what I would like to do um, is go around the room for our, our commissioned officers and I would like to just give them an open floor and give a mentorship moment to everyone that is uh, that has aspirations of applying to the MSCIPP program. Um, and then once we get done with that, then I will open it up for any questions that anyone has out there uh, for any of the officers that are here. So I'll start with uh, uh, JG Select Marone, if you don't mind, this is your time for a mentorship moment. All right, thank you. Um, okay, so I will tell you just a few things that helped me um, get selected. Uh, interviews are very important. Um, I went into my first interview with Captain Teamer, she works at, uh, at Walter Reed, and, and I felt like I just blew my chances right there. <laughs> So, uh, and I say that to say, don't be discouraged because, you know, she gave me great feedback. She was probably the best person I could have had at my first interview with going into this, not knowing what to expect. Um, and she was like, okay, you, this is stuff you need to know. Uh, and she gave me a list. And so I kind of worked off of that list from that first interview. Um, and I'm glad she still graded me like, <laughs> not probably how I should have been graded for that first interview, but she, she, she gave me a little more leeway and grace in that, in that interview. But I took that feedback um, and, you know, I went and did my homework. So I was not going to have that same uh, interaction on my next interview. So it was, you know, do your homework on the, on the program that you're applying for. Know about the program. Know the specialties in your program. Know the... I mean, everything about it, the director of the program, you know, what's the mission? Um, and those were some of the things that I just kind of was missing before I went into that first one. And so I started keeping a list and it's funny, like I would listen to YouTube videos on the way to work and I was just like, let me learn everything about the medical service score and then let me learn about HCA. Uh, so I don't embarrass myself again. <laughs> and uh, and it's okay, like, you're going to get that feedback. So I started keeping kind of a running list of, of things I would pick up along the way, you know, things that I wanted to maybe mention in an interview that would make me sound like I knew what the program I wanted to get into. And I knew the specialty um, that I was interested in. And, and I could speak, you know, you want to speak educated on that subject with your interviewers because then they say, oh, you know, she, she's done her homework on this. Um, and that list just kept growing. It was just kind of like a study I would uh, keep on my phone. If I heard something, I wrote it down. Uh, so that for me, you always have your phones on you, utilize them, right? Um, if someone told me, oh, hey, you should talk to such and such, I'd go back to my little MSCIPP notes 
write their name down and then go reach out to them in an email and network with them. And so uh, that was huge networking. I mean, again, picking up first time, I don't know, compared to, you know, maybe what y'all did, but being in this area in the, in the national capital region and networking with, with certain people, I think really made a difference in getting interviews. Um, I met with Admiral Swap. Uh, if y'all are familiar with her, but so, right. And so I, and it wasn't anything more than like, I know you can't interview me, but can you just talk to me? And it was just setting that like, hey, it's not about who you know, it's about who knows you, right? And, and so I was like, hey, whatever, you know, advice you can give me or anyone you can put me in contact with. So I sat down with her and she red inked my package. And I didn't expect her to do that, but you know, it's just something that along the lines of, hey, I just reached out. You could say no, but I was like, hey, would you meet with me and just look, you know, look at my package if you have time or just talk to me and give me, you know, uh, advice. And so I ended up getting three more, you know, referrals to, to people to talk to and possibly interview with. And I went into to all of them kind of like, hey, if you, if you are able to interview me, cool. And I knew some weren't, um, you know, Captain uh, Rona Green, like, if you can't interview me, that's fine. But would you just meet with me and talk to me for, you know, maybe 30 minutes. And so that networking, I just want to, I want to emphasize that that was so huge. And because that person puts you in touch with this person, and that puts you in touch with this person. And then come the board, you don't know who's sitting in your board, but they might have been someone you met with, and someone who's, you know, familiar with your name in the community. So I think that that helped. Um, I was asking questions to myself, you know, the whole, what are you going to get? Why do you want to be an officer? Why are you going to go from uh, enlisted to officer, uh, especially chief? Why do you want to go from chief to officer? Um, I sat down with Miss Kim. I got everybody's calendar who would get, who would see me pretty much. I was like, Miss Kim, can you review my package? You know, and she gave me feedback. And so I really think maybe what set me uh, apart from some of the other packages was just how many people have looked at it and maybe giving me feedback. And like we were talking about before, um, you're not gonna implement every bit of feedback that you get, uh, but I got a ton of good feedback after meeting with all these people um, and you know, getting a good mentor. And it was funny because my mentor was like, you know what, I've met with so many MSCIPP applicants and they don't, they don't actually take what, you know, the guidance I give them or the mentorship and put it into action, you know, it was, it, they were telling me it's great to see you actually put it into action or that you took what I told you and you did it and you made these changes or whatever. So, you know, listen, you might not take everything, but like, don't go in there like, oh, I'm going to meet with you and then thanks. And then you never talk to them again and you never did what they told you and you never listened to the advice. Like, follow back up and be like, hey, thank you for that advice. These are the changes I made based on your advice. And here, what do you think now? And so I thought that was really important too. Um, and again, network, network, network. And I'll stop there. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Next, let's go with JG Shirley. Okay. Don't mind if I do. So I'll keep it short. Um, stay positive. So I am the positivity pusher and by command. Everybody will tell you. Um, and I always, when I was teaching EAP, if you're a corpsman in this group, then you already know that advancement's not the best, right? But you have to put yourself in position for everything that you do. So I always, always, always say, it has to be someone, so why can't it be you? That is what I say to everyone. If you don't do what you're supposed to do, because it starts with you, if you do what you're supposed to do, to achieve your goals, everything's going to fall into place. If you do what you're supposed to do, you're going to get an EP. If I mean, or at least an MP, or you're going to be in line to know what you need to do to get that. Um, I, I'm telling you that it's your outlook. You can be sucked in by negativity, but it's going to muddle everything that you see and everything that you try to do. So if you feel yourself, you need to switch it around and you have to be positive. And I tell everybody, hey, we're all on different paths. I'm not trying to get your seat, I'm trying to get my own. 
so we can work together. We can do what we need to do. Do your research. That is what um, Lieutenant J.G. Marone just said. Plan. Have a plan. The best thing that, that I feel like I do, I schedule. I write things out. Like I have on my wall in my room from 2018, I wrote on a drive bar, I wrote that I was going to be selected in this program. It's still there. And I looked at it every night before I went to bed because it guided everything that I did. So you have to plan. It guided me, okay, well, you your undergraduate grades are not that great. So you need to get your master's. You're probably not gonna be picked up to do training. You're probably need to work towards direct, you know, just being realistic with yourself and seek mentors. She went into very in-depth about that, and I agree with every single thing that Lieutenant J.G. Marone said, And but I had a lot of mentors. I had enlisted mentors because you still have to foster where you're at. You have to foster your enlisted career. You don't know where you're going to go. You don't know how long it's going to take to be selected, and if you're doing that, everything else is falling into place. You're going to have things to put on on your officer application. You know what I mean? So just seek mentors. Um, if someone sends you to someone, it's for a reason. A lot of times, the way the officers operate above you, they know what you don't, and they may see something in you. So like, eh, maybe you need to go talk to Captain Cates or Captain Green, Captain Teamer. They will send you to people, and you don't know who you're meeting with because you're E5, you're E6, you don't even know these people. You don't know who you're meeting with. And then you get on the other side, and you're like, that was you? So don't ever um, discount. That was another important thing that she said. Don't discount what people are telling you because sometimes they're trying to help you get into position. So that was really all that I have. But if you don't remember anything from what I said, it's stay positive and it has to be someone. So why can't it be you? That's the most important thing to me. But that's it. Thank you. All right. Some, I mean, you guys pretty much said everything. That's some really outstanding points. I have to beat the dead course here, mentorship and networking. Um, I applied six times. So some of my early networking really helped me in the long run. I mean, I had built and, um, you know, had relationships with some of my captain and commander mentors for five years. Um, and that relationship over the years, even just reaching out every so often, even after the results had came out, I didn't get selected, just, you know, hey, how's it going? This is going to be my approach next year, you know, whatever it may be. Keep those connections. Um, with the net networking piece, if you're in a place that um, may not have a lot of healthcare administrators, I was down in San Antonio at the schoolhouse. Uh, not as many healthcare administrators as a Walt Reed, Bethesda, right, or a Balboa, but I didn't let that discourage me. It's a huge AOR, so I mean, I would drive places to meet people. Uh, I can't tell you how many Subway sandwiches I had meeting with a, a mentor, you know, and just getting to know them. I think a, a good point with that is when you are building these mentorship relationships, don't approach it as just a, a relationship that you need something from them, right? Um, if it's the first time that you're sitting down with a captain, you shouldn't go into that room and be like, hi, sir, ma'am, I'm HM1 so-and-so. Can I have a letter of recommendation? You know, build that relationship up over time. If I ever had those first meetings, I would kind of, and I, I'm extroverted and I talk a lot, but I would kind of take over the meetings. I would, if I only had 30 minutes, I wanted to get as much information out of them as I possibly could. You know, I would, I would prepare to go to my meetings days, weeks in advance, writing down all sorts of questions like, oh, I'm meeting with Captain Quick. He's the POMI specialty leader. I'm going to ask him all these things. I'd be online researching POMI. You know, I'd be researching uh, NAV admins or, you know, policies that pertain to his specialty, X, Y, and Z. Uh, and you can also make yourself stand out in other ways. I would never go to a meeting in my camis. I would always go in at least my NSUs or even sometimes I would go in my dress uniform, trying to make a good impression, you know, have a good haircut. Uh, appearance is everything, you know, those first impressions. Uh, and a mentor of mine early on helped me with a way to break the ice. So if I, you know, wanted to get a letter of recommendation from a specific captain per se, I would always go to their EA and request to have a meeting with them 
Uh, and after I'd built that relationship over a few meetings or one hour, maybe even a lunch, I actually would put together a package where I would have my bio in it, a business card, and a formal request letter. I would never, I never would go up to someone and be like, hi, ma'am, sir, can I have a letter of recommendation or will you do an interview appraisal? I would always, uh, I have it, I'm willing, if anybody wants to reach out to me, I'll send you the format, but I have like an official uh, request letter. Uh, you know, just trying to be formal uh, and professional, if you will. Uh, last thing I just want to leave with you is don't get discouraged if you don't pick up your first time. Um, again, I applied six times. Uh, a lot of those times I thought I was going to be a shoe in and when the results would come out, I was devastated. It was really a hard pill to swallow. Um, you know, I was excelling and advancing on my enlisted side of the house and it was, it was hard for me to understand like, why am I not getting selected? But those relationships that I had built early on, uh, in this journey really helped me get through this. And, uh, and it's not just on the officer side. I had great chief mentors, senior chief, master chief mentors uh, who were like, hey, if this is really what you want, like we're also here for you too. And we will help you and do anything we can to get you there. Um, I wasn't going to apply last year. I was, I was like, you know what, I'm done. I'm just gonna focus on making chief and moving on with my enlisted career and you know, get out at my 20 year mark. Um, and my wife and uh, a few of my mentors, you know, had a, some conversations with me. I literally had a mentor talk to me on the phone one night until past midnight for three hours. Just like, no, you've already put in so much work in this. Like, we need you in this community. And he talked me off the ledge. You know, the next uh, day, I got right back into it. And I hit it as hard as I can, harder than I ever had any previous year. Uh, and lo and behold, I, I got selected this last year so. I can just leave you with one thing. If this is what you want to do, if this is the, the one thing that you want to do in the Navy, don't get to, uh, discouraged. Seek this out till you get selected. All right. If, if there's room for you to improve, improve on it. Um, if you get feedback and there's, there's areas that you can strengthen, seek out guidance on how to strengthen those areas and reach out to the community. There's so many people in this community that are willing to lend a hand to sit down with you, take the, uh, you under their wing, um, and show you the ropes, give you little tips and tricks on this. So don't be discouraged. Reach out to people, all right? All right. Good stuff. I, uh, I do have a lot to say, too, but it's, this time is ticking. So I'll tell you what. Uh, for those that are still on, let's go ahead and go into a question and answer, because uh, I don't want to keep people too long. Um, for those that are still here, if you have any questions, you can put it in the chat box or you can come off your audio. I'll give you a, a few, just to gauge and see where we are. Any questions out there? Okay, so I don't hear anybody coming off of audio to ask a question, so maybe they're typing. In the meantime, um, maybe we answered them all i was gonna say that <laughs> and what i did what i did do is in the chat box so there are uh email addresses in the chat box as well as i did try to make a little list of everything that everyone was saying and put it in the chat box um i will say that your letter of recommendations um try your best to get them as senior as possible um if you can if you can get a a senior officer to write your letter of recommendations, that's awesome. Especially if you can get uh, someone that's in that specific community. If you can't, that's okay. Uh, I had a colonel in mind, as well as I had a MD in mind and a nurse corps in mind. Um, but if you can, if you're applying to, for example, MSCACA, if you can get a senior ACA to write a letter of recommendation, then uh, that's, that's great. The interviews, uh, definitely be prepared for it, be ready. Uh, and I'm not gonna harp on that because that was already talked about. Uh, we already talked about the CO's endorsement, which is huge. And then I do like what J.G. McCarthy mentioned. When you do ask for these letter recommendations and or interviews, make sure you have a bio. Make sure you have a resume. Uh, I would send, I know for me, I always sent my bio, my resume, my transcripts um, at, at a minimum. At, oh, and my personal statement at a minimum to everyone. So they can at least see why I want to do it. They can see what my academia was like. They can see what my experience is like. Um, as far as professional experience. And then by the time they actually sit down with you and talk to you, then it's just really about getting to know really who you are because they've already looked at everything else. 
um, your evals as well. They, they'll probably want to see your evals too. So, and then yes, please keep applying. Cause I, I had already told myself, I, I, I had already knew I probably wasn't going to make it the first time up. Um, and I, I, I had told numerous officers, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep asking. I'm going to keep knocking at your door. I'm going to keep applying until you let me in. So I think, I think JG McCarthy's uh, story is, is all about resilience. And there's a lot of people that took five and six times. I think that JG Marone's story is amazing too, to be selected on the first try. Uh, you just never know. You never know what's going to happen that year. So, but if there are no questions, I hope that this was beneficial to everyone. I want to say, I want to give a personal thank you to Lieutenant JG Select uh, McCarthy and Lieutenant JG Select Marone, who will soon be commissioned uh, and off to ODS into their new duty stations. Uh, definitely want to thank Lieutenant JG Shirley, who had, she had to log off, but thank her for her time. And, uh, we're not going to stop doing things like this. We're going to keep giving back. All right. This was just the first time. Uh, we've all been busy. We still had careers that we had to tend to. It doesn't stop just because you get selected. You have, you have to continue to be the chief and, and the uh, HM1 or HM2 or whatever, you know, whatnot until you get commissioned. And once you get commissioned, you keep going. We keep going. So I have nothing else. I want to say again, thank you all for your time. Get you all back to your families. This will be, uh, this is recorded. So the link will be posted. And, uh, you all have a blessed evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>